the mountainous border region between Pakistan and Afghanistan. This is where Osama bin Laden is believed to be hiding. U.S. and Pakistani forces have been operating here, attempting to flush out al-Qaeda and Taliban fighters. The operation started in March 2004. In the next six months, about 200 armed fighters were taken into custody, including members of al-Qaeda. Now that the war on terror has moved to this region, the media war has followed. New jihad videos appear to have been produced in great numbers in this district. This is the town of Wana, on the border of Pakistan and Afghanistan. This region is mainly controlled by local tribes. The Pakistani government's role is limited. New jihad videos are openly for sale on the streets. They show young fighters training in a mountainous region and demand the immediate withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan. The name of the producer appears at the end of the video, Mohammed Hadi Amarti. He has been producing videos for the past three years while fighting alongside Al-Qaeda. His latest video shows young men battling U.S. and Pakistani forces. Amarty edits images filmed on the battlefield and produces video CDs which are ready for distribution in a matter of days. This is as close as the filmmakers came to finding Al-Qaeda's shadowy media organization, As-Sahab. Once an actual production facility in Afghanistan, As-Sahab has become decentralized and relies on technically savvy individuals like Amarty producing videos on a single computer. I don't think Asahab, uh, the production facility for Al-Qaeda, is a place uh, with a 
you know, with an office and, you know, it is a guy with a laptop who's got the right software to do simple effects, dissolves, you know, making graphics and the sort of thing that you can buy, you know, for a hundred bucks in, you know, in Pakistan off the shelf, this kind of software. So it is a bunch of people who have the, the technical knowledge to, to do this. The U.S. media strategy to compete with Al-Qaeda has not achieved what some had hoped it would. Questions have been raised about the effectiveness of al hura the Arabic language news channel backed by the U.S. government. Opinion surveys in the Middle East found al hura to be four times less trustworthy than the dominant Arabic language news service, Al Jazeera. Charlotte Beers, the Under Secretary of State for Public Diplomacy, who is expected to be a key player in the U.S. media strategy, resigned after 18 months on the job. Bin Laden is, is um, larger than he should be because he is really just a common criminal. And in fact, we now know that many other people were more skillful and talented, but there's a, an underground and a, a capacity to use media that we are very naive about. They are on the internet sending miscommunication and lies and messages that are very distorted all over the Middle East. And it's very frustrating that we are not savvy enough to put our own internet pieces to play. In 2005, former White House communications director and Bush confidant Karen Hughes was put in charge of improving America's image in the Muslim world. Telling America's story to the world. Author and journalist Peter Bergen believes it would take a propaganda effort as ambitious as the one America undertook against an earlier enemy in order to effectively counter Al-Qaeda's media strategy. We had a very effective effort in the Cold War in terms of propaganda, Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, etc. Uh, we need to kind of learn some of the lessons of the Cold War. You don't, we won the Cold War not just because we had battle tanks in Germany, but, but we had a whole range of a strategy, a media strategy, a propaganda strategy. I don't think we have one now. In the meantime, on television, on the internet, and on video CDs available throughout the world, the elusive As-Sahab media organization is reaching its target audience, a young and impressionable audience whose perceptions can be shaped by what they see on the small screen.